the three questions that I'd like to ask my local atheist. I believe that these three questions will fundamentally challenge his suspension of belief. Question number one is as follows. Imagine that you pass a beautiful tree, an orange tree. You see a fully formed orange tree, hundreds, maybe thousands of oranges laden on that tree. Here's the question. That tree began from a very tiny seed. That seed weighed, oh, I don't know, a fraction of an ounce. The tree that you see in front of you weighs thousands of pounds. Where did the thousands of pounds of stuff come, come from? It began as a very tiny seed, yet you see thousands of pounds of stuff. Where did all of that stuff come from? Now, if you'll tell me that that stuff came from the ground, I'd like to challenge that. If you were to take a metal vat, put 500 pounds of dirt into that metal vat, put an orange seed into that dirt, and leave that seed there in the sun and the rain for a good few years, what you would find is a fully formed orange tree weighing thousands of pounds, but yet 500 pounds of dirt still in that vat. You see, the stuff of the tree, the bark, the wood, the cellulose, didn't come from the ground. It actually came from a process that we know as photosynthesis. Photosynthesis means that the leaves absorb the sunlight. They convert it with the water, the carbon dioxide, and they synthesize, they create a new product which wasn't there before. The stuff of the tree is synthesized, created by the tree itself. The thousands of pounds of stuff is brought into existence by the tree. That's question number one. Question number two is, if you bite into an orange, you taste that very delicious sort of tangy, sort of sweet citrusy flavor. Where did that sweetness come from? Now, if you bite into the seed, it's rather bitter. The water is tasteless. The dirt is also bitter. Where did the sweetness of the orange come from? If you'll tell me it came from the ground, it's also not correct, because the ground contains none of that sweetness. The sweetness of the orange came also from this process called photosynthesis. The leaves absorb the sunlight, convert it into this stuff. They join it together with the water, join it together with the carbon dioxide, and synthesize, create new stuff. They create the sweetness, the delicious citrusy flavor. Here's question number three. The color of the orange is quite distinct. It's the orange color. Different than the apple, different than the pear, different than the banana. Where did the color of the orange come from? If you dig from here down to China, you will not find orange in the dirt. The orange of the orange came through a process that we know as photosynthesis. The leaves absorb the sunlight, take a little bit of water, a little bit of carbon dioxide, and synthesize, create this color called the orange. If you contemplate these facts, you'll find them astonishing. All of the stuff of the tree, the flavor of the orange, the wedges within it, the sweetness, the citrus, the color is all created by the tree. Have you ever given a tree an IQ test? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Tree, do you know what day of the month it is? Do you know who the president is? Do you know what state you live in? The IQ of a tree isn't. It's an inanimate object. There's no wisdom. Yet the tree does something that's so phenomenal, so beyond belief, that when you think about it, you say to yourself, it just can't be. The rabbi has to be exaggerating. It can't just be photosynthesis. There has to be some other answer. Yet if you look in any basic science textbook, you'll find there are no elves. There are no magical elves that sort of synthesize the stuff of the tree. It's a scientific process known as photosynthesis. But once you understand that process, you begin to understand the wisdom of our Creator. When you see the vast and intricate systems that God put into existence and maintains, you see the wisdom of our Creator. If you'd like to come to love Hashem, says the Rambam, study the works of Hashem. Look at the wisdom replete throughout this world. When you see the wisdom of Hashem, you come to desire knowing Hashem, you come to love Hashem. These three questions, when asked, these three understandings, when a person comes to them, really brings a person to a true understanding of our Creator and a true understanding of the greatness of the creation that He brought forth.